Hello there, Whipplings, and today I'm going to be showing you a mod called the Card Magic Mod, which basically adds playing cards into Minecraft, and not in the way you'd expect. So pretty much it adds all the different suits of playing card into Minecraft, so we've got diamonds, hearts, clubs, and spades, and also the Joker. So what you can basically do with these cards is hold them and then throw them, and they'll give you different effects um, depending on which card you use. Um, although there are some negatives about using these cards, because they also backfire occasionally and actually affect you instead of what you're trying to target. Um, but anyway, I'm going to start off by showing you the crafting recipes of course. They're fairly easy to actually craft, so don't worry about this. So first up we've got the diamond playing card, and to craft this you're just going to need two bits of rose red dye, and some paper in the centre, and then you craft yourself the playing card. And then for the heart playing card, it's just the same, but sideways, like in a horizontal fashion. And then you get the heart playing card. And then for the clubs, instead of the rose red dye, you're just going to need some ink sacks with the paper in the centre. And for the um, club, it's going to be horizontal. And for the spade, it's going to be vertical, like so. And then you get yourself some playing cards. But last but not least, we've got the joker playing card. And to craft this one, you're just going to need to use ink sacks and rose red dye with paper in the centre vertically, like so. And then you craft yourself the joker card. Now, you may be thinking, oh, now I can just go and use these, but you can't. Before you can actually use them, you have to actually put five of them in a crafting table along with a bit of bone meal, and then you'll actually get some loaded cards. And the loaded cards just look the same, but they have a loaded um, text next to the playing card name. And then this means they're loaded and you can actually use them. So yeah, bear that in mind, you can't use them until you've actually combined five of them with bone meal. Um, but there's also something else over here I need to show you. And these are the Hoyles cards, I don't know how you say that word. I think it's Hoyles, but anyway, the Hoyles cards, I'm probably saying this totally wrong, um, basically are less likely to backfire than the normal cards. So you might want to actually craft these straight away after you've crafted some of the ordinary um, playing cards. Um, and what you need to do to craft these is just put the playing cards, five of them, along with an ender pearl in your crafting grid, and then you'll craft yourself a Hoyles playing card of the same suit that you put in the crafting grid, like so. And then these are more lucky, pretty much, so they won't backfire as much and there's less risk of you actually affecting yourself instead of the thing you're targeting. So yeah, that pretty much sums it up for all the crafting. Now I can actually go in and show you how you can actually use the cards and the abilities that they have. So to show these cards off, I think I'm going to be using the Hoyles um, playing cards. That way they're less likely to backfire and I can show the effects better. Um, but first up, we've got the diamond playing card. And what this basically does is it spawns an explosion wherever you fire it. So just to demonstrate this, I'm going to put down a little god chicken here. Sorry about this god chicken, but you're going to have to die. So here we go, you just hold the card in your hand and right click and there you go, explosions. Wherever you aim, it actually like arcs the card and as the card falls, wherever it lands, it explodes. So if I fire over here, you can see it's arced and it should explode somewhere over there, but it was probably out of range. Let me do that. There we are. So you can see over there, that's where it exploded. Um, and these go really far, so far in fact, that if you fire it too high, you can't actually see the explosion because it goes so far. So I recommend doing it quite close, although you could hear that explosion. Um, so there we go. And if I keep doing this, hopefully you'll get the backfire effect. There we go. So you see there, if I used it too many times, I got unlucky, and I ended up getting a backfire effect on me. And I think with the Hoyles playing cards, it's a 10% chance of a backfire, whereas with the normal cards, it's a 40% chance of a backfire. So be very careful if you're only using the normal cards. I strongly recommend upgrading to the Hoyles cards. It's just much better, and you're less likely to damage or hurt yourself. Um, but anyway, next up, we've got the Heart playing card. Now this one basically just gives you four hearts when you right click, or it has a negative effect where it actually poisons you for a short duration. So if I just right click here, you can see nothing happened, but if I had no hearts, I would actually have gained four hearts. And if I keep right clicking it, hopefully we'll see the poison effect eventually. Maybe, there we go. So now you can see I've got 10 seconds of poison like that. Uh, so yeah, if you're in a like close combat situation and you're about to die, I suppose you could have some of these cards on hand and you could use them to regenerate your hearts, um, but don't use too many because you're going to get unlucky eventually and then you're going to poison yourself and it's probably not going to end up very well for you if you suddenly get poisoned while in the middle of combat trying to heal yourself. Not the best idea in the world. So next up we have the club, and the club basically spawns a mob wherever the card lands when you throw it. So it can either spawn two zombies two spiders, a skeleton, or a cave spider. And the way I thought this would be good is if you're on a PvP server, 
um, in multiplayer of course, and you've got someone that's trying to attack you and they're over there, you could just throw this card at them and hopefully it spawns some mobs around them which they have to deal with before they can come after you. Ideally a cave spider, because cave spiders are so annoying. In fact, if they got poisoned by a cave spider they'd probably run away instead of trying to attack you anymore. So yeah, that's pretty much the use of this card. However, it also does have a backfire like some of the other cards, and the backfire of this is that instead of spawning the mobs over there, you'll actually spawn the mobs right next to you. And if you're like in a really low health um, situation and uh, you accidentally spawn a mob next to you using this card, then you're probably not going to like it and you're probably going to end up dead. So yeah, that's the backfire of this card. It's quite deadly. And I'm just going to give you a demonstration of that now. So let's just go into a different difficulty setting so we can actually see what it's spawning. Throw one over there and wow, I got unlucky straight away and it spawned the mob right next to me. But let's try that again. So yep, there we go. Over there it spawned two spiders and if I throw another one over there, did that actually spawn anything? No it didn't. Okay, is nothing spawning? Oh there we go. I think it was spawning cave spiders and they were just hiding in the uh, tall um, like wheat fields. I think it's wheat, I don't know what it is. But there we go. So that's how that one works. And you can see at the start there it backfired and these zombies spawned right next to me instead of in the distance. So that's how that card works. So next up we have the spade playing card, which if you use correctly and it doesn't backfire, gives you some really awesome potion effects. And of course if it does backfire it gives you some not so awesome potion effects, which can be quite annoying. But anyway I'm just going to give you a demonstration of this now. So if I just right click with this now, wow I've got really unlucky and straight away we've got the negative potion effects. So you can see here we've got the slowness 3 for 10 seconds and blindness. So you can't really see anything, well you wouldn't be able to see anything if it was actually um like no shaders but because I'm using shaders it doesn't really work well with blindness so you can see very clearly just just ignore that um, but anyway if I right click again there we go now we've got the good effects we've got the night vision for 20 seconds speed and invisibility so you can be super sneaky super fast and just run around everywhere being a floating playing card of course that's only if you're holding the playing card now I'm just completely invisible and you can just see my tracks as I run yay dirt being kicked up everywhere it's brilliant so yep you can actually be a true magician with that card make yourself invisible, run around everywhere really fast, it's really awesome, although the backfire is not so good. And if I keep using it again, we can just get the backfire again hopefully. Wow, I'm being really lucky. Every single card I used, none of them gave me the backfire effect. But anyway, you saw what the backfire effect is anyway, so you won't really want to see that again. And that's pretty much all of the normal cards. But last but not least, we've got the Joker card. And this is why I've got this sheep imprisoned over here. And don't worry, this sheep won't be imprisoned for much longer. I'm now going to set him free using this Joker card. Now, the Joker card gives you an ability to actually swap places which with whatever mob you're actually throwing it at. So over here we've got a sheep, and if I just throw the card at the sheep, I swap places with a sheep. So there we go. I've actually called this sheep Bab. I don't know why, but I just have. Um, let's just... I can't get out, can I? Because I'm not in creative. So I'm just stuck in here. Yes, and now I'm going to swap places with you again and put you back in here. So like that. Um, the downside of this is randomly, if you actually don't do it correctly, it's going to randomly teleport you to anywhere in the map, really, or any other mob in the map. So you don't actually end up where you want to. So I'm going to just keep swapping places with a sheep and hopefully eventually I'll get the negative effect. There we go. So you can see I've appeared over here, which is probably where another mob would, would have been, uh, but it's not anymore and I've just changed places with it and now I'm randomly somewhere where I don't know. And that's what happens when you don't know where you're going. You just jump into a canyon and die. I am the most clumsy person ever. But yeah, that's, that's what the Joker card does. Oh, and luckily I built this very close to the spawn so I can just run back here. So yeah, that's pretty much how it works. You can just use the Joker to swap places with any mob you like or you're looking at. And ideally you need to be in close proximity to only one mob because if you've got loads of mobs around you, it's a bit, um, a bit of a look of the draw which one you actually end up teleporting to. So make sure you're really close to the mob you actually want to change places with. And just going on to something with this, I'm going to swap places and try something cool out using the Joker card because there's some very cool tricks you can pull off with it. And yes, sorry about you being trapped in there. I'm just going to set you free now. Look, look at this. Freedom to the sheep. Yes. Bab. Okay. <laughs> okay, that was a terrible name, but it is Bab like Bob, but in sheep form. So go on then. Walk. Walk. Go free. Go free. Why are you looking at me? You need to walk. You know, you have legs. You can walk. I'm going to have to push you out. Just push. Freedom. Freedom to Bab. Okay, there we go. He's gone. So, yeah. 
So in order to show you the epic trick I had planned, I've had to find somewhere really high up. Now I wanted to find a mountain because you'd normally associate mountains with high up places, but I flew around and I couldn't find any mountains, so I went to the next best thing, which was a redwood forest with these massive tall trees here. Is it a redwood forest? Yep, it is a redwood forest. So I'm at the top of one of these trees, ready to t test this thing out, and basically what I'm going to attempt to do is I'm going to put down a cow here, and then jump off this tree, throw the joker and hopefully swap places with the cow, leaving the cow to fall to its death and me to be safe home and dry on the top of this tree. Um, but that's the ideal situation, if the card backfires of course, I'm going to be teleported somewhere random in this world and it's not going to be ne anywhere near as epic. So here we go, I'm just going to spawn down the cow and then jump off, throw the joker and there we go, the cow's fallen to its death and survived. Well, the cow hasn't survived of course, I I've survived, that's what I meant to say. But there we go, so it actually worked correctly for once, I was expecting it to backfire and me teleport down to the ground. Secretly I did do this like five times. Okay, there we go, you did not hear that at all. Um, yeah, it has taken me a few attempts to get that one working because last time I did it I just teleported to the ground and that was really embarrassing. I was like, yeah, this is going to be an epic stunt and then I just land on the ground instead of teleporting to the cow. But that's basically how you can use the Joker card to do some cool things. And the cool thing about this Joker card is it also works on servers. So you can actually throw this at some um, other guy on the server um, when you're jumping off a cliff and you'd swap places with him and then he'd fall to his death instead of you. Um, but that pretty much sums up everything for the Magic Cards mod and thank you for watching. Please remember to leave a like if you've enjoyed and I'll see you next mod video of course.